So we are nearly at the end of Euro 2020. We have got the semi-finals. Italy, Spain, England, Denmark. Which two of these teams will make it to the final? Let's find out. What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel today. It is my Euro 2020 semi-final predictions. If you guys want to have a chance to get some points on my prediction league, make sure you comment your predictions in the comments down below. And speaking of the prediction league, this is what the prediction league currently looks like. I'm still in pole position, but Onar Mataji is still on my tail there. I still got to make sure that I consistently get enough points in. But also, look at AJ Wolf and Nicholas Bauer offer two new entries as well. Welcome to the Prediction League. And finally, before we move on to my predictions, you guys want to see the Fantasy League leaderboard? Well, it's this. AJ Wolf is the leader with 263 points with Rudy in second place. I've fallen down to sixth place, unfortunately. But I've changed my team completely. I remembered this time and it looks like this. So obviously, it's mixed with the four teams in the semi-final. Very expensive than points, but I did have uh, unlimited transfers cards. So I've managed to get away with that. So fingers crossed, this could be my comeback. And I'm still aiming for that top three. I think it's still possible. But if you guys like what you see, please make sure you do give this video a like. It just reminds you up the channel. Please subscribe if you're new. We're nearly at 600 subscribers, nine subscribers away from 600. That would be amazing if we can get there. And please share this channel. That is how I'm going to grow. But without any further ado... Let's start predicting what I think will happen in the semi-finals. So the first one happening tonight is Italy versus Spain. Now I'm intrigued to see the outcome of this game because both of these sides have got their strengths and their weaknesses in their own way. I think Italy definitely looking the more complete team at the moment because defensively they've been great. They've only conceded two goals in the entire tournament. As with Spain, they had a very slow start to the tournament, of course, managed to clutch their way into the round of 16 by emphatically beating Slovakia. And then since then, they've played two 120-minute games of football in the knockout stages to get to the semi-final. But in the end of it, they got to the semi-final and also they've managed to score 11 goals in their last three games. So Spain at the moment are improving. But I do think Italy will still be out at the favourites. Now, one big blow for Italy is that Spinozola is going to be injured for the rest of the tournament, unfortunately. Although they do have Emerson, who can play in Spinozola's position. I don't think he's got the same quality. But I do think he can fill him in. Chiellini and Bonucci, I expect, to still stay in the squad. Di Lorenzo on the right-hand side. He'll be playing an even more important role now for the fact that he's lost Spinozola as his other full-back partnership. Verratti, Jorginho will probably stay in the midfield position, but there's so many options that they could go for in the other midfielder positions. I'm thinking it could be Barella or it could even be Locatelli, who didn't even feature for Italy when they played against Belgium last time. And the front three, I think they'll stick with Insigne. I think they'll stick potentially with Chiesa because I thought he was brilliant for Italy against Belgium. And then maybe Immobile as well. But I don't think he's had a great tournament, to be honest with you. Maybe getting someone like Belotti in this position is going to be a better decision for Italy. But either way, their squad depth is ridiculous. Their versatility as well is what's going to carry Italy across. Spain's squad, I think, will be a little bit similar. You know, right now, I don't think they've got too many injuries. Just, I think Sarabi is the only one who I think may be a doubt for this game. And it's a shame because I think Sarabi has been... One of the biggest stars for Spain, especially in the knockout stage of the tournament. So I think Unai Simon stay in goal and you'd hope he doesn't make another howl low like he did against Croatia. Alba, I think, will stay over Gaia. I think the Porta and Garcia will be the centre-back partnership, maybe over Paul Torres. Aspicadueta, I think, will stay in right back with Koke. Busquets, since he's returned to Busquets, I think he's been quite important for the leadership role. Pedri could potentially start with her. Rodri could also play in that position as well. Then for the front three, for the fact that I don't know Sarabi is going to start, maybe they could introduce Danny Olmo, who I think has been a good player coming off the bench. But as a starting player, I'm still not too sure about. I think they could stick with Moreno and I think they can stick with Morata as well. But if I were to look at the squad's fat, I think they do have available. There's one team I would back and at the moment it is Italy. Now, what I think could happen in this game, I think it'll be very interesting. I think it'll be 
a little bit open. I think both these teams do love to play expressive football a little bit. I think Italy would definitely be more suited to sit back a little bit and probably allow Spain to play with a little bit of the ball. They have been very precise, Spain, and I think they've averaged the most possession out of all the teams in the tournament. So Spain will probably have a little bit more of the ball than Italy. But the good thing about Italy is that they can sit back and they can counter as well. They allowed Belgium to have a spell where they had more of the ball and they completely punished them for it. I'm going to bat Italy. I'm going to say 2-1. I don't think it'll be a clean sheet. I think it'll be very, very open. But I'm going to say a three-goal game, 2-1. And FIFA 21 is going to agree with me for once. And the final game to predict is England versus Denmark. This is a huge game for England. Because I think out of any tournament ever, we have not got a bigger opportunity, not only to make it to the final, but to win Euro 2020. We've got the biggest opportunity to win our first trophy in 55 years. We're still hunting our trophy since winning the World Cup back in 1966. It's been way overdue for England to try and win a trophy. And I think now is the time for us to do so. However, we face a Denmark side who have come in huge strides. Since losing their opening two group stage games, they've won every single game since then. And they've comprehensively been the better team for me as well. Beating Wales by four goals to nil in the round of 16. Also beating Czech Republic by two goals to one. They were very, very brave against Czech Republic as well. Going 2-0 up in the style that they did as well was being absolutely brilliant as well. England, for me, have taken a little bit of time to get going. Although, for the first time, I felt we've seen a performance that we can be proud of. I know it's against Ukraine. So, on paper, against Denmark, it's going to be a much tougher test. But it's still a win by four goals to nil. And I am really, really have been impressed, actually, by how clinical we've been. Because it's been a really big curse for England in terms of rearing missed chances. Now, if we are able to take chances against this Denmark side... I think we may have a chance. Now, I think what's also unique about the England squad for depth that we have, it is honestly impossible to predict the front four. It is honestly impossible. I couldn't tell you. I think the defence will stay the same. Walker, Stones, Maguire, Shaw. So it will probably still be a back four. I hope it's not a back five. Because I do think against Germany, whilst we did use the back five and we did win, I don't think we really utilised it properly. I don't think that's the way forward. I think we'll stick with Phillips and Rice in the defensive mids. Now the front four, the last time we used Sterling, Mount, Sancho and Kane. Now I don't know if Saka's going to go back yet. So maybe that right mid position can still be up for grabs for Sancho. You know, I thought we had a pretty good game actually against Ukraine. I don't think he was amazing, but in glimpses he was absolutely brilliant. So he could return. We could have someone like Foden be back in that position. You know, I actually don't think he started the game since we didn't manage to beat Scotland. Mount might keep his place. I think Sterling and Kane, I think they are the only two forward players I think Southgate will stick with. Because for me, both of them have been the most reliable players in this tournament with England. Alongside going to the defence of Jordan Pickford. Because I think he's been brilliant. The last goalkeeper to keep five consecutive clean sheets for England was Gordon Banks in World Cup 1966. So there's a couple of parallels at the moment, but I'm not going to get carried away. I think for Denmark's sake, they've got a good squad on their hand. Schmeichel is a nemesis in goal, honestly. He's going to be so intimidating to try and beat. Honestly, we'll be up there for one of the top goalkeepers, not only in the tournament, but in the Premier League. He's really going to be tough to get past. I think Vestergaard, Kerr and Christensen will stay as the back three. I think it will be a back five that Denmark will go with because they are very, very organised from this formation. Chucky Mele, I think, will stay, who's had a terrific tournament. The assist he had for Dolberg's goal was honestly sublime. I think Jen Stryger Larson will also stay there as well, who did get the assist for the first goal as well. And one thing I've noticed, both of these teams attack by crosses. So it's really going to be interesting to see which team does it better. Both defences will need to be on their game here. I think mean, Hoiberg and Delaney will stay. Maybe Bray Frey and Damsgaard could potentially start. Damsgaard might not, but I think he will still stay. And I think Dolberg will start up top again. So I think it'll be a very similar score to what they had against Czech Republic. With this game compared to Italy and Spain, I see this game being very, very cagey. A lot more cagey compared to the other one. You see, because Italy and Spain, they've had experience in this stage of the competition. They know how to approach it. They know how to go gun-o. Denmark, they've not been to the finals, you know, since Euro 1992. 
And England, of course, you know, we've made it to semi-finals, but very, very rarely have made the final. Last final, of course, was all the way back in 1966. I'm really nervy, though. Denmark have beaten us very recently at Wembley by one goal to nil. Although, to put into context, they did play around 75 minutes of that game with an extra man on the pitch since Harry Maguire got sent off. And if Harry Maguire is starting, he better not get sent off for England again the last time where he played against Denmark. So, this game, I think it does have the potential ability to be nil-nil at full time. But I'm going to say, for once, I'm going to be a bit optimistic. I'm going to say 1-0 England over 90 minutes. I was going to say after extra time, which actually might be the more realistic option. But for me, there's only one goal I see in this game. And it'll be either 1-0 England or 1-0 Denmark. I don't think there's going to be any in-betweens in this tie. So it's really, really close, but I'm going to back England. FIFA 21 is going opposite and saying 2-1 to Denmark, which would be devastating if that was the actual result. But that wraps it up for all my predictions for the semi-final for Euros. We're really entering near the tail end of the Euros. Of course, later today will be my watch along. I have got work, so if I do stream a little bit late, I do apologise on that, friend, but you just got to be patient. But that will wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It does help. Please subscribe if you're new and please share this channel. All that really helps. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are legendary for signing up for this video. And as always, I'll see you guys very, very soon.